Welcome back. We're going to build out our tic-tac-toe model. Uh, if you are familiar with Kotlin, if you used it uh, before, uh, you should pr can probably go through this one fairly quickly. Uh, but for most of us, this is going to be uh, you know, a, a little bit deeper dive into, into Kotlin if you've never used it. I hope that you're learning about Kotlin using some other resources uh, that, that we provided. The website is very good, a lot of good basic things right there. Um, and we're going to be looking at those parts that, that are particularly applicable to uh, building out our, our, our tic-tac-toe model, right? So things that we're going we're gonna to talk about, so um, just how do you do arrays or two-dimensional arrays in this case in, in Kotlin. Uh, we're going to write a reset game method. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get and set the, the different marks uh, that are on the board here. Uh, and later on, we're going to do things like checking for the win and getting the game state, like whose turn it is or, or who won or, or so on. All right. Uh, so we're going to go back to uh, go back to Kotlin here, uh, and let's let's go ahead and and dive in. So I'm going to make a new project. All right. So once again, empty activity, and we're going to call this guy simply tic tac toe. All right. And hopefully, if you had the hello button from last time, if you followed along, uh, you've already set up your package name and you've already got your folder set up as far as where you want that language is Kotlin. All your defaults are are going to be fine. All right, so we'll click Finish, let that build. It built, uh, and since I want my model in a separate class, I'm going to go ahead and make that class. So I will go ahead here, and I'm going to right-click on the package and say New Kotlin File or Class. And what I want is a class, and I'm going to call this right here Tic-Tac-Toe Model, uh, like, like so. All right, or t uh, yeah, Tic-Tac-Toe, or maybe even Tic-Tac-Toe Game might be a little bit better. Uh, we'll, we'll try that, since that's what the model actually is, is, is the game object itself. Uh, all right, very good. So, so here's our class. Um, we want to do several different things. I'm going to start off with uh, sort of what's going to be stored in it. And it's going to be marks, uh, so X's or O's, or just not used yet. Uh, since these are three related constants, I could do them as constants, but what typically people will do is to use an enumeration, all right, an, an enum class, as, as we call it. Uh, and I'm going to call this right here uh, marks. And this inner class within here is, is going to have um, three different things to it. Uh, so it's going to have uh, so none. So if there's no mark, right, then that's going to be uh, then that's going to be zero, right. And if you don't put anything, it's going to default it uh, for you. And then I could have a mark uh, for x's, and then a mark for o's, right. So so those are my different uh, my different choices there. Okay. Um, I'm also going to have a, a game state, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make an enumeration for this as well, and this is going to be called uh, game state, and this is going to have five different states, right? So, so whose turn it is, so X's or O's, and then who's won, and of course the last would be, would be a tie, right? So we're going to have things as simple as X turn, O turn, X wins, O wins. Uh, or tie game, like so. All right, so th those are my, my different game states. All right, so the next question is, what are we going to need to store in here? So, so yeah, we have marks, but but you know, how many of them do do we actually have? Uh, and I'm actually thinking I should probably call this mark. I think that that'll be better. Uh, all right, very good. So so I need an array of um, an array of of marks, right? So a two dimensional array would sort of most naturally. Uh, you know, lend itself for, for a table format. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and declare a, a private um, variable here um, that's called board. All right. Uh, now board, I can give it a type if I want. Uh, and I'm going to do this originally. So, so this is an array. And you'll see that it lets you um, uh, par parameterize your, your type here. So it's an array of arrays. Now Kotlin actually lets you, um, for your innermost array, it lets you actually type it. So there's a type here called int array, right? And so, so that's, that's what I have. These enumerations, these constants actually are just integers. So all that I have is an array of int arrays, okay? Like, like so. Um, and I want to initialize this, right? So how do I want to initialize it? Um, well, the, here's the syntax. So I'm going to use array, and you'll see that array um, takes a size and then then a function to do initialization, right? So let's do this. So array, and then my size is going to be three. Hmm, it feels like I should probably have a constant for that. We'll 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 take care of that in a second. And then out here, I'm going to have my initialization function 
uh, that's here. And this is essentially going to initialize each row, since I have three rows here, to an int array itself. Oops, uh, grabbed the wrong one. Uh, int array um, that is made up of uh, three columns, right? Like so. All right. So that's my board. Uh, yeah, so these threes, which ones rows, which ones columns, that's a square board. So in some sense, it doesn't matter. But let's go ahead and set up um, some constants for these. Uh, now, you can do your constants outside of the class. Uh, if you would like them sort of encapsulated within the class, uh, in Java, we'd be thinking about this as being a static object. In Kotlin, we use the, the term a companion object. right? So, so it's, a, it's like a single object. So it belongs to the class. Uh, so very much like static, uh, but it's a companion to it, so it's so a part of it. Um, and in here, I'm going to do my, my, my uh, couple things. So I'm going to have a val um, for uh, num rows. And val just means that once I assign it, uh, it, it can't be changed. Uh, so and number of columns, OK? And let's spell it right. And that's also equal to 3, OK? Uh, and you notice, because I care about the values of these, I'm actually setting them here. It's a little bit different than Marks and, and Game State, where I really didn't care what values they had as long as they were distinct from each other. Right? Just good documentation. All right, so in these, uh, so I have an array of arrays. Um, the outer array is going to have my num rows uh, outside here. And then in here, I'm going to have my number of columns. All right, so, so that looks pretty good. All right. So the game needs to keep track of the board, actually, what, what marks are there. It also needs to keep track of, um, of the actual game state itself. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and have a, a, a private var uh, game state. Right? Um, and that's going to be of type um, of this, this enumeration type. So it's going to be of type game state. And I'm going to initialize it somehow. The way that, that I want to initialize this is going to be, um, well, we start off the game typically with it being x's turn. So let's go ahead and, and set it to uh, game state uh, x's turn, All right? Um, like so, right? So so that's good. Now it turns out that this type right here is actually not not required uh, because it can figure it out since we're assigning it to game state dot x turn. I could, if I wanted to, uh, delete that right there. And the same thing is actually true on um, on my array. It can infer from the statement on the right that it's an array of int arrays. Um, so you'll, you'll, you're going to develop a, a, a pattern in your own programming of, of how explicit you want to be with your, your types. So I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Um, all right, so with these things in mind, uh, we, can, we can do our first thing, which is going to be uh, to, to go ahead and reset our game. All right, so let's give ourselves a little bit more room right here. Uh, and we're going to write a, a method right here to, to actually do the reset. So this is going to be, uh, I can make it a private function if I want. Okay, uh, Reset game. And reset game is essentially going to take all of the, um, well, it's going it's to take all my our marks and reset them. Now, interestingly, the default values here for integers are 0. And 0, right, in terms of, of it being um, used as a mark type, is the first one here. It's mark none which is actually what I want. That's why I put mark none first, because that's like the zero, and that's, that's what it is by default. So resetting the game is actually pretty easy. I can just go ahead and, and reset the board to, you know, and I can copy and paste right out of there if I want, but, but an array um, with that many rows, and each one initialized to an inter, inter array with that many columns, okay, like so. So I can just reset the board like that. And if I want to reset the whole game, uh, I can reset the game state um, to be uh, game state uh, x's turn. All right. So really, the same initial values that I gave them here. But I want this as a separate function because I want to be able to reset it later on I'm in, in my game. I have a button that's going to reset it when, once the game is done. Hmm. And that makes, makes me actually think here. Uh, the rest of the world needs to know about reset game. so. I should make it private, right? So we'll, we'll expose that to um, to the controller when I click that button. All right, very good. So there's reset game. Um, one might argue, when you construct it, don't you want to just call reset game anyway? Now you notice that I haven't defined a constructor here, but when I make an instance of this class, it's going to initialize these variables. 
uh, if I want to be explicit uh, with, with um, a constructor without actually writing one, um, we have something in, in Kotlin that is called init. In fact, it's not even, not even uh, specified as a function, although it, 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 it works like that. It's the first block of code that gets called when you make a constructor call. Right? So um, I'm going to initialize here. And what initialize is going to do is just, just going to say, go ahead and reset the game. So whenever I make a new instance of tic-tac-toe game, um, I'm certain that it's going to do the actual reset here. All right, uh, so that, that's good. Um, let's do one more thing. Uh, so I'm going to want to write a unit test here in a minute to make sure that resetting actually works. Uh, to, since the game board is, is private, uh, what I'm going to want to do is, is expose what's in there in some way. And the way that's going to be useful to do this for our game is to provide a string for the actual mark that's there, right? So we're going to make one so that when the, when the, the view asks, hey, you know, who's in the upper left-hand corner, you know, it says, you know, who's in row zero, column zero, that it can come back and say, oh, there's a string x there, All right? So let's go ahead and do that. So again, this is going to be exposed to the rest of the program, uh, so it's, it's not going to be private. So I'm going to make a function here called string for button state, or for button at, sorry, string for the button at. And then the parameters that we're going to pass in are going to be a row, which is going to be an integer, and then a column, which is also going to be an integer. Right. So those are my, my parameters that I'm, that I'm passing in. Uh, and it's going to return a string. So let's give the, the return type right here. So it returns a string. Uh, and then uh, we're, going to, we're going to have some simple things. So I could very simply, um, I could ask myself if, let's see, so the board, if the board, board, uh, at row and column, okay, um, double equals, so if it, if it equals x, so mark x, so mark uh, dot, mark x, all right, like that, then what I want to do is I want to return the actual string x, right? And that that, that kind of makes sense. Now it's complaining here that you can't use uh, you can't use double equals on on these things right here. So so what does this what does this mean, right? What do, what do we need to do here? Uh, so board is an int array. Maybe we could make this an array, um, not of of an int array, but we can actually make an array of marks. Right, so it, it the the type checking is actually more careful than we originally thought. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this. So what about an array of an array of mark, like so? Um, and of course that's going to mean that that the type here is going to change a bit. Uh, so this is going to be an array of arrays, and we'll go ahead and, and initialize this once more. And this is just going to be uh, mark none, like so. All right, and you see that that's that that's nested in there. It's using the same syntax for the inner and the outer arrays. All right. Well, now you know how how you would do it if it were primitives. Uh, but for marks, this is what we have. All right. So, and we're going to have to use that same thing down here. So, if you remember, uh, what I initialize it to it here, and what I use down here, were the same. So, I'm going to go ahead and, and update that so that they match. All right. Uh, so, it looks good. Uh, and now I see that that the type checking works on this. So, I'm comparing a mark. To a mark, All right? Um, so, so if I have that, return an x. Uh, second condition, and I could do an else if I wanted to, uh, but I don't need to since the first condition returned. It wouldn't go any further. Uh, so, if board column is mark dot mark, uh, so o, uh, then I'm going to return the string o, oops, capital O, like so. Uh, and otherwise. I just want to return so nothing, right? So there's the mark none means there's nothing there, uh, and that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to do one more thing here, and just to make sure, as as you know, good sort of uh, error checking is that the values that they passed in for row and column are legit, right? So if they pass in something out of outside of the range zero to two, so I have three three rows, three columns, so so just like you know many programming languages where the zero index so zero one two. Uh, if they're outside of that range, then we should just return mark none, right? It's probably a, a simple thing to do. Just say that there's nothing there. So um, if the way that I do this is I say if the row is in a certain range, right? So if the row is in the range zero to, to, to two, I could say if, if row in range, 
Uh, and I can actually, there's, there's two ways of doing this. I can do dot dot, and then I can give, so this is an inclusive, so if row is in the range 0, 2, and it turns out num rows is 3, and it, I want um, to 2, I have to say um, num rows minus 1, okay, like that. So if that condition is true, and the column is also in, in its own range, right? So 0, 2, num columns uh, minus 1, right? If, if that's the case, uh, then I will go ahead and execute these next two if statements. And that's actually also a good thing because it's going to protect me from array index out of bounds errors if they did pass in like a, an invalid value, you know, hey, I want row 10. Well, there's no 10, 10th row. Um, this would have thrown an error uh, otherwise. So we're just protecting against that. So these only get executed for, for valid rows. Um, I will mention, uh, because it's a, it's, a, it's a good time to, to do so here, uh, that there's actually a slightly, um, a slightly better way of doing this, a cleaner way at least. Uh, if you didn't want to worry about the, the, the number rows minus one, then there's also uh, an until uh, operator that, that we can use here that is, uh, that is exclusive, right? So, so it doesn't include that last one. So you could say uh, zero until the number of rows and column uh, we'll change this here to until uh, the number of columns. And we'll end up using this in a lot of our for loops uh, as, as we go through here. All right, so I have a string for button at. Um, it's not used yet. Uh, I am going to use it in unit test. But let's wrap up for, for now. Uh, when we come back, we'll see a little bit about writing, uh, about writing unit tests in Kotlin. All right, see you then.